Who is God? Many are turning to the truth in these last days and are returning to the original ancient Hebrew language used by the Creator of all things. The true name of our Father, Yahweh, is quickly becoming more recognized around the world as well as the true name of our Messiah, Yeshua, along with the Father's dedicated spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. So the true question is, that we should be asking, is who is Elohim? That's the Hebrew title of God. Men have wondered about our Creator for hundreds, even thousands of years. According to the scripture, He is unsearchable, but the scripture also says, Seek, and you shall find. Can it be that the mighty Creator has manifest in His Word who He is to those that diligently seek Him? Let's begin a journey together to find out more about our Elohim and prove whether or not He reveals Himself to us through his Kodesh word. Hello and welcome to this channel. Uh, the things that we're going to be studying today are very exciting. Um, it's probably a different take on things than you've ever heard before. And that's because it's not a new thing. It's an old thing, but sometimes we overlook things. This time we're going to uncover the truth, look at it, talk about it, and understand it. I wish somebody had done this study when I was just a young man. It would have made my life uh, and my studies with our father much, much better and much more uh, easy for me to understand. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get into our study screen. There we go. I have this up on the board where I can, you can watch what I'm doing and see what I'm doing. And sometimes if you don't understand what I'm saying, you can actually read what I'm saying. And of course, not everything that I'm saying is written up here. Like what I'm doing now is, is not written at all. So it's off the top of my head. The question from the trailer, of course, the title of the trailer was, Who is God? God is the world's way of saying Elohim. But the Hebrew way saying Elohim is much better, much more accurate. And Elohim is the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh. That's who Elohim is. But it's goes much deeper than that. To be able to really ask this question, who is Elohim? We have to ask several other questions and determine the answer to those questions before we can possibly answer the question, who is Elohim? Another question that we need to ask is how old is the name of Yeshua? Is it as old as Yeshua is? Was that name made up and given to Yeshua when he was born as a man in this world? Or is Yeshua a name that somebody from the beginning that was with the Father from the beginning, is it 6,000 years old? Or was Yeshua, whose name probably isn't going to change, it's been the same always, is Yeshua a name that is eternal, just like the name Yahuwah? That's some of the things we're going to get into today. What does the name of Yeshua mean? It means Yahweh is salvation. 
You get that from the strongs, you get that from the uh, different concordances and uh, encyclopedias, etc. Most common consensus for the name of Yeshua is Yahweh is salvation. And I agree. That is the true meaning. Yahweh is salvation. And often, most often, you're going to see it spelled Y-E-S-H-U-A. Now, is that the correct spelling or no? Well, it's correct if you want it to be correct. There's not much about the vowel here, the E. I'll input a U followed with an H and um, just trying to make people pronounce the name correctly, Yeshua. But this vowel is not here, between the Yod and the Sheen. Here, the representation of the Yod, Y, and the representation of the Sheen, SH, has a vowel between the Y and the SH. But there is no vowel here. So that would have been a sound that was handed down. So the name that was spoken by Miriam, when people would ask her, what is his name? His name is Yeshua. The way she said it would be the way that would be said following for the rest of uh, the rest of Yeshua's days on earth and, of course, beyond when he's ever spoken of. So the most important thing to know is that you've got the Yod and you pronounce it Yah and then you've got the Sheen, which is an S-H sound, and you've got the Wall, which is a U sound in this case, and the ayin, which most of the time is silent, but in this case it adds an ah sound. So it's yah, shua. That's simple. So, in Matthew Yahu, chapter 1, verse 20, it says, But while he thought about this, See, the messenger of Yahweh appeared to him in a dream, saying, Yosef, son of Dawid, do not be afraid to take Miriam as your wife, for that which is in her was brought forth from the Ruach HaKodesh, and he shall give birth to a son, and she shall give birth to a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. He was told to call him Yeshua. Was that because that's a new name that the father was giving for his son that was being born into the world? Let's read on before we answer that. Let's read on a little bit further. Let's go to the book of Yochanan 17. That's the book of John. And start with verse 1. Yeshua said these words and lifted up his eyes to the Shamaim and said, Father, the hour has come. Esteem your son so that your son might also, uh, also might esteem you. You have given him authority over all flesh that he should give everlasting life to all whom you have given him. And this is everlasting life that they should know you, the only true Elohim, and Yeshua, Messiah, whom you have sent. I have esteemed you on the earth, having accomplished the work you have given me that I should do. And now, esteem me with yourself, Father, with the esteem which I had with you before the world was. That speaks miraculous things. What esteem was that? The esteem which I had with you before the world was. It was the esteem of being the creator. Does Elohim change? That's a question we can ask now. Does Elohim change? According to 
Evrim, that's Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Yeshua Messiah is the same yesterday and today and forever. That would indicate no change. In the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6, we read, For I am Yahuwah, I shall not change, and you, O sons of Yaakov, shall not come to an end. Yahweh does not change. In the book of Yaakov, James, chapter 1, verse 17, we read, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change, nor shadow of turning. So we've answered the question with Scripture. We've proven with the Scripture. Elohim never changes. Now, ask the question again, how old is the name of Yeshua? He was with the Father. The Scripture tells us that everything that was made was made through him. And nothing that was made was made except that which was made through him. So he was like an adult, <laughs> adult during the time of creation, who became a baby, became a man, in every way, Yahweh is the father. And his physical representation and Alan studied about this, and, and uh, I agree with him 100%. His physical representation is Yeshua, HaMashiach. So when you see the angel of the Lord, most cases it will be referencing Yeshua himself, who was the physical representation of the Father many, many times in Scripture. And I'm sure you all are aware of that. Let's take a look at Yochanan chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. Who is the Word? We know it from the Scriptures. We've read it hundreds of times. Yeshua is the Word. So in the beginning, Yeshua was. And Yeshua was with Elohim. And Yeshua was Elohim. He, the Word, was in the beginning with Elohim. All came to be through him, and without him not even one came to be that came to be. Well, Yeshua was part of Elohim, even in the very beginning. And I'm going to share something with you here in just a few minutes that will open your eyes to see this in a way you've never seen it before. What is Yahweh? Yochanan chapter 4, verse 24 reads, Elohim is Ruach. Yahweh, in particular, is Ruach, and those who worship him need to worship in Ruach and truth. So Yahweh is Ruach. So if you say, well, if he is Ruach, what about the Ruach HaKodesh? Yes, he is. He's the Ruach HaKodesh, and he is Ruach. Who is Yahweh? Let's look at Yeshayahu, chapter 60. That's Isaiah, chapter 60, for those of you who do not know. Um, and you shall drink dry the milk of the Gentiles, and shall melt the breast of sovereigns. And you shall know that I, Yahweh, your Savior and your Redeemer, am the Elohim of Yaakov. Okay? Who is Yahweh? He's our Savior according to Yeshayahu. Now, I thought Yeshua was the Savior. The New Testament says many, many times 
I don't have to even go and read those. You already know. Yeshua is our Savior. But here, Yahweh is claiming that he is the Savior. So who is the Savior? Yahweh or Yeshua? I, Yahweh, your Savior and your Redeemer, am the Elohim of Yaakov. Yahweh is our Savior. And Yeshua is our Savior. We only have one Savior. Oh. We only have one Savior. Yahweh, our Elohim. Yeshua, our Elohim. He and the Father are one. More one than we can ever say. I want to share this so so badly right now, but I need to wait just for a moment. The Ruach is all over me right now. Yahweh is our Savior. Yeshua is also our Savior. And that is not a contradiction at all, but rather a revelation. Chew on that for a while. Who are we to pray to? Matthew Yahu, chapter 6, verse 9, Yeshua is saying to his Talmudim, he's teaching them, this then is the way you should pray. Our Father, who is in the Shamaim, let your name be honored. Yeshua did not have to speak when he prayed, but he did. In most cases, it was because he wanted people to hear how he prayed, to whom he prayed. He prayed to the Father, our Father, who is in the Shamaim. And Matthew, Matthew, Yahu, chapter 26, verse 39 says, and going forward a little, this was when Yeshua was in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before the uh, <clears throat> impalement on the stake. And going forward a little further, a little, forward a little, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I desire, but as you desire. Again, he uses Father. When he prays, you'll never find a prayer he prayed, that prayed to anybody else but the Father. So if we are going to pray to Mary or any disciple of Yeshua or anyone else for that matter, even the Ruach HaKodesh, or we, if we are praying to Yeshua, that would be improper. He taught us the proper way. We pray to the Father, Abba, Father, Yahweh. And that's what the Father desires because Yeshua put into words what the Father desires. We pray to our Father. Who are we to pray through? Who is the door that we go through? Maaseh chapter 3 in the book of Acts but Kepha said, I do not have silver and gold, but what I do possess, this I give you. In the name of Yeshua, Messiah of Nazareth, rise up and walk. <clears throat> we skip on down to verse 11 for sake of ease. Uh, and as the lame man who was healed was clinging to Kepha and Yochanan, and the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Shelomos, greatly amazed. And seeing it, Kepha responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or reverence we have made him walk? <laughs> the Elohim of Abraham and of Yishkak and of Yaakov, the Elohim of our fathers, 
esteemed his servant Yeshua. You get that? The father, the Elohim of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, the Elohim of our fathers, esteemed his servant Yeshua by healing that man. Yeshua actually is the one who heals. And Yeshua, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him, but you killed the leader of life whom Elohim raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And by the belief, the Aman, in his name, in his verbal, literal name, and also in his character. Always the way of Hebrew thinking, the Eastern mindset. The name is so important because in the name is also the character. This one whom you see and know, and he's speaking of the man that was lame, his name, whose name? Yeshua. Yeshua's name, made strong, and the belief, Aman, which comes through him, Yeshua, has given him, this lame man, this perfect healing before all of you. I hope this is actually touching you deep inside your own hearts, within your own Ruach, and that the Ruach HaKodesh is relaying and revealing to you the things as we read along. In Maase chapter 9, the book of Acts, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 32, And it came to be, as Kepha was passing through all places, that he also came down to the Kodesh ones who were dwelling at Lod. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years, being paralytic. And Kepha said to him, Aeneas, Yeshua, the Messiah, heals you. Rise up, make your bed. And immediately he rose up. And all those dwelling at Lod and Sharon saw him and did turn to the master. That man was possibly bedridden for eight years, being a paralytic, just for this one reason. And he would have agreed to being bedridden for this one reason, because all those dwelling at Lod and Sharon saw him and did turn to the master. Amazing. What name was used? Yeshua, the Messiah. He said, Aeneas, arise. Yeshua, the Messiah, heals you. Because Yeshua is the healer. He's the one that the Father chooses to heal through. The physical representation of our Father, our Elohim. Let's look at chapter 19 in the book of Acts as well. Maaseh. And Elohim worked unusual miracles through the hands of Shaul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and diseases left them, and the wicked spirits went out of them. That's some powerful persuasion about the Ruach HaKodesh. But certain roving Yehudite exorcists I like this story. I've, I've always liked this story. But these are the, the Yehudist exorcists. Exorcists. <laughs> exorcists. Okay, these are the sons, seven sons of what the King James calls Sceva, but the actual name is Sceva. But certain roving Yehudite exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the master Yeshua 
over those who had wicked spirits, saying, We exercise you by Yeshua, whom Shaul proclaims. And there were seven sons of a certain man, Skewa, a Yehudite chief Cohen, who were doing this. They were doing it, but they came across one who was more powerful, one of the kinds that Yeshua himself said when he was still on the earth, said, this kind does not come out except by fasting and prayer. And this wicked spirit answering said, Yeshua, I know, and Shaul, I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the wicked spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And it became known to all, both Yehudim and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the master, Yeshua, was made great. Do you think that's pleasing to the Father, that the name of Yeshua was made great? Absolutely it was. The Father loved that. Even the Father said of his own son at the bab a baptism, the immersion of uh, Yochanan, when Yeshua went to Yochanan, he said from the heavens, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear you him. <laughs> the father is not jealous when the son's name is praised. Rather, the father is just absolutely delighted when the name of Yeshua is made great because it's also his name. And it's the name that he gave Yeshua and he gave his own name also to Yeshua. Now, we've laid down all of these scriptures that are perfect backing for what I'm about to say. And, uh, I say this with all sincerity in my heart, but I want to, I want to ask you something. If the Father is Ruach, then the Ruach HaKodesh would be the Ruach of the Father. Yes or no? Absolutely, yes. So the Ruach is the Father's breath. The Ruach goes out from the Father. Then how about Yeshua? What Ruach is in Yeshua? Well, he had, when he was on this earth, the Ruach of man because he was a living and breathing creature. All living and breathing creatures, all of mankind, has their own Ruach. When Yahuwah breathed into the nostrils of Adam, he became a living, breathing, and the Ruach was in him and gave him life. When the Ruach leaves a person here on this earth, they die. You cannot live without the Ruach. Now, <clears throat> let's go back. Yahuwah and Yeshua and the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the Ruach of Yahuwah and the Ruach of Yeshua. He's filled with the Ruach. They were all there at creation. He said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. I won't go through the entire scripture. You know that very well. What likeness was that? One of the most prevalent likenesses that I honestly believe the Father intended there 
was the likeness of him as Elohim. Man is made with a ruach inside, and the ruach is the very breath of a man. And what if my breath does not escape my body? I am silent. I have to breathe in order to speak. That's one of the ways, the biggest way, that we are like Elohim. It's not so much about our appearance, but because we cannot speak unless we breathe out. A dead man says no more. Not in words, anyway. So, the Father and we are alike because the Father lets the Ruach go forth from him. He speaks through the word. Yeshua is the one that forms the word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father as a breath, his Ruach. And the word is sounded. And when Yahweh said, and Yeshua heard the Father say in the Ruach, let there be light, Yeshua spoke those words of the Father, and there was light. Yeshua is one with the Father. The Father is one with Him, and with the Ruach HaKodesh, and they want us, you and me, our Mishpaka, to be one with them. What, what happens when we get to the Shamayim? Do we see the Father sitting on one throne and the Son sitting on another throne? And the Ruach HaKodesh sitting on another throne? Never read about that anywhere in the scriptures. I've read about Yahweh being on the throne. I've read about Yeshua being on the throne. But what is it going to be like when we're all together? <clears throat> all of us in the Shamaim with the Father, with Yeshua, with the Ruach HaKodesh. That's something we don't exactly know. So we cannot exactly say. But to say that Yahweh is Echad, that our Elohim is Echad, is something the scriptures say over and over. And now we have opened our eyes to see exactly how it is. I hope and pray that you have enjoyed this study and that it has been a revelation to you as much as it was to me. Shalom, my friends. I sing to Yahuwah, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and he has become my deliverance. He is my El, and I praise him. Elohim of my Father And I exalt Him Yahuwah is a man of battle Yahuwah is His name He has cast Pharaoh's chariots And his army into the sea and his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths covered them. They went down to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has become great in power. 
Your right hand, oh Yahuwah, has crushed the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellence, you pulled down those who rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath, it consumed them like stubble. And with the wind of your nostrils, the waters were heaped up. The floods stood like a wall, the depths became stiff. In the heart of the sea, the enemy said, I pursue, I overtake, I divide the spoil, my being is satisfied on them. I draw out my sword, my hand destroys them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you? Oh, Yahuwah, among the mighty ones. Who is like you? Great in Kodesha, awesome in praises. Working wonders, you stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In your kindness, you led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength, you guided them to your Kodesh dwelling. Peoples heard, they trembled. Anguish gripped the inhabitants of Pelasheth. Then the chiefs of Edom were troubled, the mighty men of Moab. Trembling grips them, all the inhabitants of Canaan melted. Fear and dread fell on them by the greatness of your arm. They are as silent as a stone. Until your people pass over, oh Yahuwah. Until the people whom you have bought pass over. You bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance. In the place, oh Yahuwah which you have made for your own dwelling. The meek dash, O Yahuwah, which your hands have prepared. Yahuwah reigns forever and ever.